So Dr. Bredesen has been working with um, Alzheimer's and his wife is an integrative functional medicine doc and he's a researcher and medical doctor um, and he's been studying Alzheimer's for decades. So he um, has put together a, a comprehensive approach to how to end Alzheimer's, how to stop cognitive decline. And it's certainly easier if we can start earlier on. But like I was telling you about my patient, Linda, she was she had a two out of 30 on her MOCA. So a perfect MOCA score is 30. This is the Montreal Cognitive Assessment Test that we use routinely on patients with any sort of cognitive decline. And she has the APOE genetics. So she's got genetic predisposition to Alzheimer's. She's got a strong family history. She's got all these toxins that I told you about. And she had advanced cognitive decline. Um, a two out of 30 is really, really heartbreaking. And she did not remember where she was, what day it was, you know, really simple things. She couldn't name a lion or a rhinoceros or a camel um, when she saw a picture of them. And so advanced cognitive decline, we can still do something about, which has been so helpful. Thank you, Dr. Redison, because he gave me the the confidence to even approach a patient like that and say, hey, there's something we can do. And sure enough, she came back four weeks later and she is doing so much better um, just by taking this reticent approach, which is comprehensive. So we're looking again at trauma, at toxins, at trophic factors. So is there enough of the hormones or the hormone balance? And this can be, we're looking for glycosylation and metabolic imbalances, um, and then we're also looking at the genetics. So he, the way Dr. Bredesen describes it, he says that there's 37 holes in the roof, and we need to look at each of those systematically and plug those holes. And you made a great point. We've talked about this before. But as and like was the case with Linda, this I experienced this over the last couple of weeks with the patient. Once you start plugging some of those holes, they really start. The, the body's so incredible; it starts to heal itself. We give it a little bit of encouragement, and then eight holes close up, right? And, and then nine holes and then 10 holes. And then it, it starts to, it's like a snowball effect in the right direction. Um, it's, it's really amazing and inspiring and humbling to see the body heal. So Dr. Bredesen's work is really neat because it's taking various things that have been known about in integrative and naturopathic and functional medicine applied to a very complex area of neurocognitive um, decline. And it is not only with Alzheimer's, but other neurodegenerative work that that kind of approach is um, helping and actually really formalizing it, getting doctors trained in it and being able to get a large body of data. Uh, we have some friends that are medical doctors that are actually working on doing the clinical studies of the Bredesen approach with um, Leroy Hood's organization, the Systems Biology Institute. Mm -hmm. And one of the one of the things that's really tricky, and I, you know, for the listeners who are having this question come up, um, hey, why don't I see more um, published literature and clinical um, trials on these kinds of approaches, is because since they are personalized approaches, it's very different than um, give everyone the same amount of a particular drug and mm -hmm. then, you know, look at in effect compared to a placebo on a large double-blind randomized trial. If we're talking about something like copper-zinc ratio, where it can actually be too high in either direction, and if you give someone the wrong thing, you make them worse rather than better, then testing to know what's going on and then creating personalized uh, treatment is actually the whole gist, right? It's not here is a pill for a... Um, symptomology presentation. It's here is a whole comprehensive personalized program for a personalized presentation. So what you have to test is the methodology of assessment, interpretation, treatment, and recursion. And that requires a different kind of science because nobody is getting the same protocol. It's very hard to placebo control that. It's hard to get a large clinical data trial, which is why it's a place like Systems Biology Institute that is trying to do the science here. But we really are at the limits of what the way we have done scientific medical epistemology can do, which is if we're not just trying to do one synthetic drug as a treatment, but how do we actually respond to what clinical presentation looks like comprehensively at a cause level? It, it's a deeper kind of science. And with the systemic approach, yeah, it does not lend itself to the randomized placebo-controlled trials uh, paradigm. And Dr. Bredesen, I think I shared his story with you when we've spoken in the past, but so he was working with a team in Australia to apply this. They were in the whole process of getting um, a trial through their IRB. And so he was talking to them and, and they were just about to finalize the protocol. And they said, Hey, you know, Dr. Bredesen, like we can't do this. There's way too many variables. 
And he was like, all right, well, that's too bad. But they were like, like send us your protocol because we want to use it on our parents and our grandparents and everybody we know, we want them to use this but because we get that it works, but we can't do the trial because it doesn't fit into our model. So people are saying that out loud. Um, and so we need systems biology, systems physiology, right? We need to put all of these pieces back together. This is not reductionist medicine. It's not reduc reductionist science. It, it, it's putting all these complex pieces back together. And it, it is complex, yes, but there's a paradox in here. It, it's also very simple. It's, it's going back to those foundations of having a bowel movement every day, getting enough sleep, dancing, and sweating and doing, getting exercise, laughing, spending time with the people you care most about, it, all of those things that are so foundational um, to good health are, are the foundations of Dr. Bredesen's work too, right? So we can measure all of these complex parameters. We can get really specific about it. There's a lot we can do, but it, I think it's also um, empowering to take a step back and say, hey, well, how do the, those foundations are so intricate, integral to that too? Yeah. To watch the full episode or to subscribe to the podcast, click the link in the description or visit us at neurohacker.com slash collective insights.